Hello and welcome to Chaotic Crochet Chatter with Stitchcraft Gifts. My name is Jenny, I am a crocheter based in North Yorkshire in the UK and this is my little corner of the internet where I tell you all about the things I have been making for the past couple of weeks and my plans for the next couple of weeks. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hello! It is Friday. Nerys is saying hello as well. It is the 19th of July. Are you coming up? It is about quarter past eleven. I have a very noisy cat. Come on then. Say yes, I know I've got stuff everywhere, haven't I? You can't get to me. You coming up? Oh, maybe. Sort of. Somehow. There she is. Here's her tail. What was I saying? <laughs> I haven't even got very far and I've lost it already. Um, okay, first off, sorry this is late. Um, it has been... It's been a pretty stressful week. I'm not going to go into why. So, sorry, I know that's a bit, like teasery isn't it I don't mean it to be um, but yeah it has it has derailed me <laughs> um, quite significantly everything has, has just stopped basically for a couple of days um, and I'm pretty stressed <laughs> so if I don't quite seem like myself today that is why uh, don't worry, I'm fine. The family's fine. Everything's okay. There's just some things to sort out that we weren't expecting to need to sort out. There is stop being a pain now. You're not allowed on my desk while I'm working. You know that. Um, so yes, sorry about that. And likewise about the utter chaos going on behind me. It's a tip in here again. I have been very much in just put things down and forget about them mode for just over a week now. <sighs> no, this is such a pest. We're gonna have to shut you out. Um, also, sorry if I look a bit of a mess. It is really, really warm here. Um, I don't know what the actual temperature is, but but certainly by my standards, it's really bloody hot. <laughs> and this room. Is quite small it's quite cozy it's wonderful in winter it gets lovely and and cozy and warm in here in summer it's awful <laughs> i have got a little fan going i don't know whether you can hear that or not in the background it's a fairly quiet one um if you can't hear it sorry but you're just gonna have to put up with it <laughs> um but yes because it is so warm and because my hay fever is playing havoc with my eyes i've got no makeup on today <laughs> which is very unusual for a podcast but that is just where we're at at the moment uh, so enough apologising and grumbling um, today is otherwise a fairly normal podcast I have got some finished objects to show you I have got plenty of works in progress to show you I have got some acquisitions uh, there's one thing on my radar what else do I talk about? There'll be some chatter at the end. Oh, and the to-do review, which I haven't actually got the numbers for, so I'll have to stop and do that when I get to it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that is that. As always, I will split it into chapters for you, so you can skip sections if you want to, or go back and rewatch a particular section really easily. Uh, the timestamps will show up if you either hover over the progress bar along the bottom of the video or if you go down to the description uh, they're all in there and you should just be able to click on them and it'll take you to the uh, to the section that you would like anything else I need to tell you before we get started giveaway podcast birthday giveaway um, there were very few entries, <laughs> don't know why, it's just the way it is. Um, I will be drawing the winner today, again it's a bit late, so you have a bit of extra time 
um, I think I put that on the community bit here and I certainly posted about it on Instagram um, but I will be drawing a winner today there are I think fewer entries than there are prizes <laughs> which is not great but never mind thank you to those who did enter I really do appreciate it um, so I'm thinking what I will do is I'll draw the winners I'll do first second third or is it first second and two runner ups runners up if I've got enough people for that um, well, it was first, second, third, and two runners up, wasn't it? So I should, I'll, as many people as there are, basically you're all going to win something. Um, <laughs> so I'll draw them so that I've got an order of who's won. And then the first winner will be offered the Crochet Society box, but if they don't want that, they can choose one of the other prizes. Then I'll go to the second place, and again, they'll be offered the second place prize, possibly the first place prize if first place didn't want it is this making any sense and then we'll be allowed to choose um, basically you can choose which prize you want it'll become clear uh, as, as we go I'm sure um, I will I will contact you either by replying to your comment on Instagram or here or if you shared on your story and sent me um, and it sent me a message by Instagram, then I'll reply to you there. Basically, however you entered, I will contact you in that way. I will include a link to this video so you know it's me. And um, I will ask you to email me so that we can sort out prizes. But I will not ask you for anything else. If anybody asks you for money or personal information or anything that doesn't seem even you know completely and utterly legit then please ignore it or get in touch with me and just check before you do anything um my email address will be in the description if you need it and you can always get me on instagram or comment on the video and i'll get back to you um so yes if you are a winner you'll be hearing from me possibly before you've even seen this video but certainly very soon and I will put in now a little bit of footage of me picking the winners okay here I am about to draw the winners for my podcast birthday giveaway as you can see here I've only actually had three entries it's not my most successful giveaway ever uh, and two of the entries are from the same person. So, um, as there are five prizes up for grabs, uh, there's the Crochet Society box, a bag of crochet and crochet adjacent goodies, a bag of chocolate sweets, and then two vouchers to spend in my online shop. Everyone's going to win. <laughs> Debbie's going to win two prizes. Sam is going to win one. It's just a case of working out which ones. Um, what I'm going to do is we'll draw the winners. I will contact the winners. Whoever gets first prize will be offered the Crochet Society box. And if they don't want it, allowed to choose an alternative. Then I'll get in touch with the second prize winner. They will be offered the bag of crochet related goodies uh, or the crochet society box <coughs> excuse me if first prize hasn't wanted it and then again if they don't want either of those offered one of the others and then same again for third prize I hope that makes sense so I have my list of winners here not winners list of entries here I have my random number generator here I'm just using the one uh, from Oh, I was going to say Google, but it's actually Microsoft Bing, isn't it? But whatever. Random number generator. We have a minimum value of one, a maximum entry, maximum number of three. One, one, two, three. So let's generate the first number. The first one is number two. And that's Debbie's second entry. So first prize for Debbie. Congratulations, Debbie generate the next one we have number one that's debbie again 
so Debbie gets second prize as well congratulations again and then that makes I don't even need to draw the third one um again oh, I can't speak this evening sorry means Sam gets third prize so congratulations everyone as I said um, in the main video I will contact the winners so wait to be contacted by me I'll either reply to your comment or send you a message via Instagram seeing as that's how you've entered and we'll take it from there so thank you very very much to you two wonderful people for entering the giveaway and I hope you enjoy your prizes right that is the intro done so we can move on to finished objects um okay this first one I was expecting to have gifted it by now but I haven't because I haven't seen my mum a little birthday present for my mum um I just wasn't able to see her on her birthday because Kelvin wasn't well we were then going to be going over that weekend for my niece's christening Kelvin was still unwell so we didn't go to that either <laughs> it is now almost a week later um we will see my mum as soon as we can I don't know when it'll be hopefully soon but yes yeah, so her little present is still here so mum if you are watching this please skip forwards I don't know five ten minutes <laughs> so you don't spoil anything for yourself um I could show you it now but I've already taken some footage of this because I was expecting to not have it here so instead I'm gonna insert some footage now hello it's Jenny from the past here <laughs> these are the socks that I have made for my mum for her birthday um and yeah just that I tell you about before I give them to her it's the 12th of July as I am recording this, which is the day after my mum's birthday. I've not seen her yet, but I'm hoping to see her this weekend, which will be before I record the next podcast, which you are now watching. Uh, <laughs> so yes, hopefully I will have given them to her by the time you see this. So these socks were made using the Watson Waffle Socks pattern. I have temporarily forgotten the designer's name. Uh, but I shall obviously make sure it's linked in the project notes on Ravelry. So I really, really love these socks. I have made myself two pairs, I think. So this is the third pair I've made now. Uh, they're really, really squishy. You get a good squish. Um, it makes them super cosy. See, not so great for this time of year, but really, really good winter socks. And then there's the lovely waffle stitch pattern. Oh, across the top of the, across the top of the sock as you can see it looks really really good in variegated yarn this is all um this yarn is from the uh mini skiing club by vicky brown designs uh, this was from july 2023 so exactly a year ago and then the contrast, the heels and the toes, is Drops Alpaca in dark green, which is 7895. Uh, I used a 25 mil hook for these. Um, and hopefully they're going to be nice and snug. I hope they fit my mum. They just about fit me. And I think her feet are very slightly smaller than mine, so hopefully they'll be okay. Obviously if they are a bit loose, then they'll just be nice slobbing around the house socks. I'm hoping she'll be able to wear them day to day. <laughs> yeah, I love how the yarn works up in this pattern. Always looks really lovely. As you can see, I have got some yarn left. I haven't worked out the usage yet, but I will do. And again, that will be included in the pattern notes on Ravelry. All right, back to the present. Okay, you should have seen my mum's present. So, other finished objects. What else have I got to show you? Oh, another one that I can't actually show you in person. Let me find a bag for it, though, with the information in. 
everything's an absolute mess today so I will be rummaging a lot because I haven't put things in any order like I normally would do um so today is I'll probably talk more about this later but it is the last day of term for UK, most UK schools certainly for Neds and oh, it's finishing too it's ridiculous um and it is customary to get gifts for teachers we our class tend to do a joint one so we all chip in and get something big we figure it's nicer but I will sometimes do a little extras for one or two of the teachers teaching assistants whatever it depends on the relationship we have with them what else has gone on in the year Blah. this year one of Ned's teachers has um has, she hasn't done anything yet will be going on maternity leave at the beginning of next school year I think she finishes in the beginning of October something like that she is off to have her second baby and obviously it's not due for a while yet but we won't really be seeing her all that much <laughs> um, and I'm not sure exactly when she's finishing so I decided to make her a little something for the baby and Ned helped me find the pattern and the yarn and it's turned out quite well I shall put a picture up here-ish and it is a lovely little hat this has been made using the baby bear hat pattern by Kylie, I can't read my own writing, Kylie Keller, I think that says on Ravelry. This will all be linked below. Um, there'll be a project page for you to go and look at. Um, it was really, really quick and simple to make. Do you want to the gauge isn't quite right. I think I've ended up making it slightly bigger than it technically should be, but that's better than too small so that's okay hopefully there'll be a, be a bit of growing room um i believe it called for worsted weight yarn i think sorry my voice went really squeaky then uh, <laughs> which i don't have much of so i held together let me get them out actually let me get them out oh, i've got that one and that one get these the right way around so we have this here, which is Wondersoft Baby Care DK. No, it's not Wondersoft, Woolcraft. I can't read my own writing. Woolcraft Baby Care DK in colour 601, which is baby pink. And then we have the Women's Institute Soft and Silky Four Ply in 52919, which is pink. And I held these together and used a five and a half millimetre hook. So the hat has ended up looking slightly mulled, which is nice. And what was I about to say? I don't know. Lost it. Gone. <laughs> um, oh, I've just noticed the light's really weird. It all looks a bit hazy, doesn't it? gonna have to do um yeah I held these together because a DK plus a fingering or a four ply is roughly equivalent to a worsted weight yarn give or take I think two DKs is a chunky I think um yeah and it worked out super quickly basically it took me less than an hour <laughs> to make which is really quick for me uh, obviously it's only small but still and it has been handed over today this morning and I'm very happy with it I was going to make some little um, what do you call them little booties to go with but I just didn't in the end basically <laughs> a lot's been going on like I said and um, quite a lot of plans have fallen by the wayside so, so never mind um, but yes, pleased with that. Hopefully she'll enjoy it. I've put a card in with it to say, look, if you don't like pink, then let me know. I will make you another one <laughs> in whatever colour you like. It's not a problem. Um, she is, I believe, having a baby girl. But that doesn't necessarily mean she wants pink. You know, Ned chose pink. <laughs> so, there we are. 
Uh, right, just a couple more, another little one. Mm. I think I mentioned last time that I've been making uh, various drawstring bags, which I intend to take to various markets. It's not in here anymore. Why isn't it in here? Oh no. Um, I've got the notebook, so that will tell me the information, assuming I wrote it down. Yes, I did. Ah, oh, it's back here. Right. I can't remember. I think I showed you this one last time because I had finished this. I think. It's the Dragon Scales one using a pattern by um, Sixel Design and then just turning it into a little drawstring bag. I can't remember whether I showed you this one. Well, I certainly won't have shown you like this. Um, it will have looked without the drawstring like that if you did see it last time. It will have been a work in progress. And I don't know whether I've invented a stitch or not. <laughs> yeah, almost certainly not. Um, but it's a stitch I haven't used before and I haven't come across before. <laughs> And I really, really like the texture that it has um, created. Oh, it's going to fix in the middle. Well, there we go. It's a bit better. Almost looks woven. And I think if I did mention it last time, I will have said I just felt it looked a little bit plain. Nothing wrong with it. I just like to have a little bit of something to. Um, to each of these bags so I thought I would have a go a little bit of embroidery on the front and it's turned out quite well okay so I have used the chain stitch embroidery stitch which is super simple and easy but looks really lovely and I've just embroidered the word joy across in is it dark blue it's either dark blue or dark purple I thought that was a nice contrast. Um, you can probably still see the pen marks actually, I need to give it a wash. So I literally just traced out the design in um, a washable pen, literally drew it straight onto the bag and then embroidered over the top. So you can't see most of it because the stitching covers it up, but there are a couple of bits where you can. So I suspect there'll be a lot more of this in kind of thing in my future because it has been super simple. Um, it took me a little while because I was taking it nice and slow, make sure I got it nice and neat. But it was quite, um, it was quite nice, quite mindful, quite meditative. It's a really hard word to say. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how it looks. So I do need to give that a wash, but otherwise it is done and ready to go to my next market and possibly, in fact, up on the website. I need to take some photos. Oh, I was going to tell you some stats about that. Uh, so there's no pattern, I made it up myself. And the yarn, oh here we go, the yarn that I used. Um, the yellow is Dera Moore's Studio Baby Soft DK in 70103, which is sunshine. And the contrast is Paintbox Simply DK in 137, which is midnight blue. I haven't written it down, I don't think I timed this one, I don't know how long it took. It was a three and a half mil hook, and it's about six and a half inches wide and about seven inches tall. So that is that one. And then the last finished object you have definitely seen before, and in fact you've seen it at least the last couple of times and I've been going I will finish it, I will finish it, I will finish it. I've finished it now. <laughs> we have got a finished, let me get this the right way around, finished Christmas jumper. <laughs> did it, I did it. <laughs> so it now has two sleeves. <laughs> um, and it is, it fits nicely, it looks good, I haven't taken any photos or anything yet, I must do. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with it, now that I've finally, finally got it done. Um, 
And this is using the Festive Furs pattern by Manatee Squares. It's got a lovely, hold it up again, filet crochet Christmas tree design all over it and down the sleeves as well. Can't see, there we go. <laughs> uh, and this is using, what's the yarn called? I know it's a Yarnsmith's one. Find the label. Did I put them in here? Yes, I did. So, Yarnsmiths create Aaron. Aaron and Worsted are the same, incidentally. Pretty much, anyway. And the colour is. Ooh, my hands are shaking. 4090, which is Claret Red, which is pretty much my favourite colour in the whole world ever. Um, I just really like it, basically, and I think it really suits me. Um, what size hook? I don't know because I've taken it out there. I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere. She says, maybe, hopefully. Um, the original pattern calls for a little bit of colour work, but I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so I haven't done that. I've just done it plain. It's a really lovely colour. It is a colour that suits me, I have to be honest. And um, I haven't worked out the yarn usage yet. I haven't taken any photos or anything yet, but I will do both of those things and add all that information into Ravelry when I get a chance. Mostly I'm just really, really pleased to have this finished. I can wash it, put it away, and it'll be ready to wear in December, which is brilliant. <laughs> Yay! So that has fallen over. <laughs> is I think that's everything I've finished I have completely lost track at the moment of what I'm doing and when I'm doing it Got no idea but I think that's all my finishes so on to works in progress just checking where I'd put something I didn't mention just now I was just showing you my Christmas jumper and I haven't even mentioned that it's Christmas in July at the moment or rather that I'm taking part in Christmas in July this other project is also relevant. So this here is an old crochet society box. It is box box number thirty-nine. Try that again. Box number 39, which is from December 2022, November 2022, I think, worked out. Have I written any of this down? Oh, and I've got it all here anyway. No, I haven't. Oh, but that's information that I need. So that's handy. In fact, this bag shouldn't be with. Oh, I've completely confused myself now. No, this bag should be with. It will all come together eventually. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I showed you, did I show you the mandala last time for Lindsay? I'm just gonna have to check my notes now for last time. So I've now confused myself. Three. That's the one before last time. 24 was the last episode finished of Jax Lindsay's Mandala, so I have shown you that already. I'll probably give you another glimpse at the end of this, to be honest. I am seeing the lovely Lindsay this evening. Anyway, back to what I'm actually supposed to be talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, which is this box? This is, yes, Crochet Society box from. Not the Christmas just gone, the one before. And uh, I've told you this before, but I will tell you it again because otherwise it won't make sense. Let me find the pattern. 
So the pattern that this has been inspired by is this. It is the Peace on Earth Bunting by Kelly Wilson Moore, who is Love Dodgy Crochet on Instagram. Who's lovely, by the way. Um, she's someone I follow and occasionally chat to. I think we've been in a couple of test groups. Creaky chair, sorry. Um, and she's just really nice. <laughs> and so backstory saw the pattern liked the pattern wasn't keen on making mugting so I made the squares anyway and thought okay I'll put them onto the front of a hessian bag attach them on in a nice arrangement maybe do a couple of other embellishments and that'll be really lovely didn't work just couldn't get the arrangement right couldn't get the colours right so I've abandoned that, finally. I've remade the squares. I have created designs for a few more squares to go with. I'm going to join them all together and make a cushion. Now I have, this is still very much Kelly's pattern. Yeah, this wouldn't have happened without her pattern, but I have changed a lot of things, even to the extent that the Squares are now, instead of being tapestry crochet, I am doing Tunisian crochet, which is the first time I have ever done Tunisian crochet, uh, which you will be able to tell from some of the squares. <laughs> so they're not the best, but they're okay. Um, and I have swapped the colours round. So in the pattern, I think the, uh, the colour for the the letters was white or at least very pale whereas now i am using yeah that color for the letters and then i'm changing around the um that one, that, the background colors so the white that was for the letters is now one of the background. I hope that made sense. I've got no idea. <laughs> like I said, I'm so scatty at the moment. No, sorry, I'm just finding all these squares so I can show you. Okay, so you will definitely see that some of these are not entirely neat. Some of them are better than others. Some of them are okay. In fact, the last couple are great. So, in no particular order, we have an E. And this will still say Peace on Earth, so I've got all the letters to spell Peace on Earth. Oh, there's another E. See, that one's proper wonky. Uh, and yes, Tunisian crochet quite often needs um, quite a good blocking anyway, I have heard. But some of these are ridiculous. Oh, another E. <laughs> Because of course we need three. Uh, a H. Uh, o. P. Oh, that's one of the other ones. Da, 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 da. T. N. Everything's getting tangled up. A. That's a pretty wonky one as well. Never mind. C. And another A. And then I have the first of the additional squares, which I have designed little symbols for. I've basically got. Um, so it'll be piece and then a line of symbols and then on but obviously three of the squares in that row will be symbols rather than letters because on is only two letters and another row of symbols and then earth along the bottom so it'll be a five by five squareish rectangle all of these little panels I'll join them all together somehow um, I'm 
thinking I'll do quite a definite border for each square so that it looks like a grid, if that makes sense. Um, but one of the little symbols I've come up with and that I have done a square for is a candle. I'll tell you, it was quite a challenge finding or creating symbols that would be recognisable when done on such a small piece. I think this is 12 stitches wide by 14 rows tall, I think, so that's not a lot of space for a colour work pattern. But I tell you, what else have I still got? <laughs> Let's see if I can show you a comparison. Here we go. Oh, that's not going to show up very well, though. Not going to show up better. So here's one of the originals, and the square is much neater. But look, that's. Oh, that doesn't show up very well either, does it? Well, that's tapestry crochet. And I just find that the edges are always a bit fuzzy a bit bitty, I don't know if it's maybe the way I work it or I mean I have seen other people's tapestry crochet as well and it always looks a bit like that just because of the way the stitches are formed and um, you get kind of little legs and lines and sort of fuzziness coming out the sides where as you can see with the Tunisian you've got a lovely clear defined image not holding that very well. <laughs> um, yeah, they just it's, it's a lot clearer, I think. So I'm really, really enjoying that. I am struggling a little with Tunisian because of how I hold the hook. I have always had, always used uh, what's called a pen grip with a crochet hook which is pretty much what it says on the tin. I hold my hook very similarly to how I would hold a pen for writing. That's what feels most comfortable to me. Tunisian, I think, works better if you have a knife grip where you kind of hold it as if you were going to cut with a knife um, because your fingers don't get, way, get in the way of the stitches too much. But for small pieces like this, it's okay. I have got a bigger piece in mind that I want to do with Tunisian. We will see whether that ends up being practical. I don't know. I'm going to have to get some more hooks for a start. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how these are coming together. It'd be nice if I got it finished before the end of July, but I don't think I will. There's only really a week left. No, there's more than that. 10 days. 11 days. <laughs> some days, week and a bit left of July. <laughs> um, so I might do, but I'm not sure. We shall see. The yarn for this is all the Crochet Society Confection DK yarn in various colours. Um, I won't bother telling you too much because you can't get it anywhere other than in the Crochet Society subscription boxes anyway. So it is an exclusive one. I think that's everything to say about that one. Sorry, that was so disjointed and nonsensical. Don't know what's that for that. Um, so the next one to tell you about is the amigurumi that I'm making for Ned. Salazzle Pokemon. I shall pop a picture up again here as a reference for you. We have not only a head and a neck, but a body. And a tail, <laughs> um, which is great. And then I've put it down and been a bit scared to pick it back up because I don't quite know how to do the legs. Um, if you are new, this is a project that I came about because my little boy, Ned, who is eight years old, he is obsessed with Pokemon, as many young children are. Uh, I made him Pikachu for Christmas from a pre-existing pattern in a book and he loved it and then a couple of days later he was in fact no, a bit longer a bit later than that sometime later 
it wasn't for Christmas, it was for his birthday in April. Um, but yeah, a few days later he was saying how it's really frustrating that all the toys you can get and the merchandise generally for Pokemon has got the same few Pokemon on it. I as an adult completely understand why you appealing to the masses, you go for the most popular Pokemon available, obviously. Um, and he was like, oh, I can't get plushies of my favourite Pokemon. And I was like, okay, well, who do you want? <laughs> Hello, I can make stuff. <laughs> Little did I know what I'd let myself in for. <laughs> um, you know, I'd said to him, I'd, I was honest and said, look, if there isn't a pattern, I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I can try. And he has been so patient, bless him. This has taken, well, since then. Um, and it still isn't finished. <laughs> but it's getting there. I am designing this from scratch, which is why it's taking so long. Um, and I think really I've done the easy bit now. Because, sorry, itchy nose. Um, the, I suppose the arms don't matter so much. They're very like long and thin, as you'll be able to see from the picture. Um, but for the arms that doesn't really matter because they're not trying to take any weight. The legs ideally would, I had originally wanted to make it so it could be self-supporting, stand up on its own, but although Salazzle has quite chunky thighs, like me, she has, unlike me, got very thin lower legs. <laughs> um, and so I think, I'd, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, itchy, 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 it's hay fever. Um, so I don't know, I might just have to, it's either go for the right look but have her not be able to stand up or make it so she can stand up but the legs are not right, I think. And then I need to add more detail and do the face and all that stuff but I think that'll be quite fun once I've figured the legs and the arms out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm quite pleased. Ned has approved the shape so far. <laughs> so I think he's just looking forward to having it finished and I really do need to get a move on and get this sorted out for him. He has been so, so patient, bless him. Um, the yarn is for the hobby. Here it is. Okay, this is the purple. But it's Hobby Amigo. Oh, you can't see that. I've gone the wrong way. This one's dark purple, and I think the other one's just called grey. And it is reasonably soft, reasonably good stitch definition, and um, quite nice to work with. So it's just an acrylic yarn. I like. I know a lot of people make amigurumi out of cotton, and I absolutely see why they look can look beautiful. But I prefer a nice soft acrylic especially if they're going to be cuddled. I think it's nicer. But that's just me. My summer top. I think this was still... Not sure I'd even started it last time I spoke to you. Well, if I had, I hadn't got very far. So, this is... Let me tell you about the pattern first. And then I will show you what I've done. So this has all come about because I want, I really struggle in the summer, I really struggle with heat. I really wanted to have a nice lightweight top that was still really pretty and I really wanted to wear. And I thought, okay, well, let's see if I can make one. Um, and I eventually found the pattern called, uh, I think I'm saying this right, the Vania or Vania possibly, V-neck tunic. Um, I haven't written down who that's by, but it will be in the, um, in the notes for the pattern. Sorry, I just had to stop and sort my eye out a bit. I think my antihistamine must be wearing off. And I have very, very itchy eyes with hay fever. It's not fun. Um, and head back in game. Um, the yarn that I'm using is, um, really, really lovely. And I'll tell you more about it in a moment when I find the yarn label. Um, here we go. It's a tensile bamboo blend 
by Go Handmade, which I bought from Hobby. And I have some beautiful colours. I've got Hunting Green, which is this one. A Soft Green, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and then Petrol, Jeans Blue and Light Blue. This yarn, because it's bamboo and tensile, which I believe is another plant-based fibre, it is so light and soft and silky and cool and drapey <laughs> all the good things all the things you want in a summer top um the only problem is this is a dk weight by the way Let's see if i can get this to show up is that the strands the plies are spun together There we go. But very, very loosely. I don't know how well that's showing up. But it means they split really, really easily, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but in my opinion, it is so very worth it because it feels amazing while you're working with it. And it is the same that these sleeves are made out of, actually. And it almost feels like I haven't got any sleeves on which is amazing <laughs> it's exactly what you want again in you know, when you're having a heat wave um, I believe it is a free pattern I won't tell you too much just in case it isn't but I will say it has worked as two <clears throat> two long panels are uh, the length of from where you want the bottom hem to be at the front all the way up over your shoulder, down your back, to where you want the bottom hem to be, at the back. That is the size, the length of the panels you want, and then you just make them to the width that you want them to be, and then you attach them together in a certain way to get the shape, get the shape of the top to, come to put it all together. So what I've done in full one panel, maybe I did show you last time, I can't remember. and. So this is the hunting green and this is the soft green and I did start off following the stitch pattern from the ribbon pattern but I didn't really like how it looked in this yarn so since then I've just been playing about with loose um, like mesh stitches and fillet crochet and similar techniques like that. There's a couple of rows of half double crochet just to change things up a little bit. I really, really like how it's come out. It might need to be, it might need to be just a little bit wider. Actually, I might need to add a few more rows, but that's okay. So that is one panel done. And then this one, I was going to say it's nearly done, but no, it's nearly at the same width as this. I think I've got five more rows to go until it's the same width. Um, and then again, I think I'm going to have to add a bit more, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and this side I've done in the blues. So I'll have a green side and a blue side. I just thought that was quite fun. Something like that. <laughs> Only neater and attached. Uh, so we've got the petrol, jeans blue, light blue. Yeah, if I kind of arrange it a bit more. See, I'm, I'm not going to stand up. I can't move enough in this room at the moment. There's too much clutter for me to stand up and move around. Um, but yeah, something like that. And then you attach them together so that there's a V-neck at the front and the back to whatever depth you want it to be. Seam up the sides. And voila. Uh, there is an option in the pattern, optional instructions for adding sleeves, which I will be doing because I... Uh, I hate sleeveless things, basically, hence adding sleeves to this dress. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll have it finished fairly soon. Knowing my luck, I will finish it and then I won't need it this year, because <laughs> the weather will stop um, being so warm. But to be fair, that's okay. I would rather have a top to wear and no hot weather than the other way around. So I know, I'm sorry. I will start bagging on about how much I hate me. <laughs>
itchy eyes. Sorry. Oh, I can have another antihistamine actually. I'll do that in a moment. Is that everything to say about that top? I feel like I rushed through that a bit. But I think that is everything to say about it. If I've missed anything, you think I've left out any detail, just drop me a comment and I shall um I shall add to it later. Right, let me grab an antihistamine and I'll be I'll be right back. Obviously that won't kick in straight away, but hopefully it'll stop things getting worse <laughs> and then give yeah, it 15 minutes and I should start feeling a bit better again. Which will be nice. Next work in progress is a cushion. cushion that I really couldn't find <laughs> or it will be a cushion at the moment it is becoming the cover for not my usual colours at all but using up some stash yarn and it is giving me like beachy vibes summer holiday seaside I don't know somewhere Mediterranean maybe what do you think um this is using stylecraft special chunky i wrote all the colors down bear with i did this just before coming on so i realized i hadn't written it down yet <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. there we go we have got see if i can point to them while i'm talking um we've got cream which is 1005 we have got magenta which is 1084 we have got let me get this right Sorry, I'm dithering now. Yeah, right. Bluebell. <laughs> this is 1082. Holding it upside down, it confused me. Uh, we have got 1019. It's cloud blue. And there's just a little bit at the top here, you can see, of 1117, which is a royal. I'm using a four millimeter hook for this, which is um, actually quite small for a chunky yarn, but that's because I wanted it to be really dense. Uh, it is a mosaic crochet pattern. The pattern is called Late Summer. I found it on Ravelry, and the designer is called Natalia. A surname I can't pronounce, <laughs> but it will be linked. Yeah, again, there'll be a project page in the description link to a project page and um, that will be linked to the pattern so you can find it nice and easily. Um, what was I saying before that? Yeah it's mosaic crochet which is a technique I'm very familiar with as you will know if you have been here for any length of time and it's working out nicely. Yeah each row because it's chunky yarn and the row is quite short yeah, each, each row only takes a few minutes. It's just that there are so many rows <laughs> that it's taking a while. Um, I'm basically going to make this long enough that it will wrap right round the cushion that I've got and then overlap at the back. And then where it overlaps, I will create some buttonholes somehow and add some buttons. So that'll be how it fastens. And I'm going to add border add a border up the sides and then seam it together so so it is seamed basically so it, yeah haven't quite worked that bit out yet but I'm going to finish all of this first to make it long enough um it's a quite a simple construction and should keep it nice and square looking but yeah not my usual color palette at all although I suppose blues I've done used a lot of blues lately it's very light much lighter than I would normally go uh, but I'm quite enjoying it. Yeah, it definitely feels summery. 
and although as I keep saying and I keep saying I'm gonna stop saying although I hate summer there's lots of there are there are good things there are good things about summer and yeah I do enjoy some of the bright colours and things like that so that's been making me feel a little bit better about all the summer sun okay final work in progress isn't even really a work in progress yet it's more well this is just a little test swatch um i am trying to teach myself to knit with some success <laughs> this bit here that's not bad um this is just some stylecraft special dk yarn from my stash i don't know what that color's called it's a lovely color though but yeah that bit's quite good um and then yeah this is actually my second swatch i think okay well yeah because i couldn't get the first one right basically um casting on i found a good cast on method that works quite well and i successfully cast off last night which felt like quite an achievement <laughs> um and I, the whole reason why I'm teaching myself to knit now, and I've been talking about it for a while, is I would like to have the option of knitting ribbing for garments in particular. Um, I won't necessarily always knit ribbing, crochet ribbing is fine, but I just, I like quite, like if I make myself another jumper, for example, I like long sleeves with a relatively snug cuff, one that I can stretch and roll it up, but the one I bring it down will kind of hug my hand, does that make sense? And I have heard, whether this is true or not I don't know, that knitted ribbing is better for kind of sucking in and creating that nice snug feel without being tight. So I've had a go. <laughs> that is that my tension is absolutely terrible when it comes to doing the ribbing um perhaps not helped by the fact that i'm using two separate techniques um because pearl stitch is hard <laughs> i've been using i think for the knit stitch i've been using the um is it called the english method or is it like the you have yarn in your right hand and you kind of throw it or move it around the hook um because i tried continental style having been told and having seen online that if you are a crocheter continental style knitting is great because you have the yarn in your left hand like you would if you're a right hander while crocheting i couldn't get the stitches to work doing that so i tried the other method <laughs> um and knit stitch yeah great perfect try well not perfect but really good <laughs> and then i tried the pearl stitch from that same school of knitting i just can't do it i can't I, I get it i get what i'm supposed to do but i can't get the loop through to form the stitch i just can't so i was looking up um knitting hacks on youtube i think there must be something there must be something i can do and discovered the Portuguese knitting method which I am not experienced enough to be able to explain to you go and look it up <laughs> if you want to know more pearl stitch with Portuguese knitting is so simple I cannot even explain to you how simple it is sorry itchy foot um, so I'm doing standard knit stitch and then Portuguese pearl stitch <laughs> I think maybe that's not helping my tension but it does mean I can actually form the stitches <laughs> so you know you win some you lose some um I will keep working this is very very much practice material at the moment that bit in the middle is shocking I've definitely dropped some stitches here and there gained some stitches <laughs> here and there um but what I must remember to do is keep this I didn't keep my very first like crochet swatches and I wish I had now so that I could look back and see how far I've come 
you know, how much of a struggle it was when I first started and how wonky and holy and <laughs> awful looking my first views watches were to what I could do now with the crochet hook. So I want to keep this so I can do that for knitting in, you know, four or five years time, <laughs> if I'm still going. Um, I can say, look, this is my first ever bit of knitting that I ever did, bar a bit that I just got unraveled. Um, and, you know, look at the progress, hopefully. <laughs> so I need to put that somewhere safe and keep hold of it. Um, like I say, don't worry, I'm not going to give up crochet anytime soon. It's definitely um, definitely the craft that I, I feel most comfortable with and at the moment enjoy the most. But I just think it'd be useful to have that additional skill of being able to knit some things some of the time. So we'll see whether I carry on or not. We shall see. Uh, right, that's all of the works in progress. I need to pause and do my stats for my to-do review so that I can tell you the numbers. I shall be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I have some information. So, to-do review. That is a review of all the things that I have to do. It says what it is, yeah. I currently have a total of 11 works in progress, five of which are active, which are the ones I've just shown you. That is down one, one last time, which considering I've cleared two, <laughs> I mean, it was because I started the summer cushion, that wasn't on my list before at all. Um, and future projects, I still have 18, again. I don't remember which one, but there was something that moved from a future project to a whip, but then I've added another future project <laughs> back in. I'm never ever going to get to the end of that list, it, quite clearly. Um, so as always, I'm going to talk to you about a specific project, just to keep this vaguely interesting. Um, and it is in fact a thing that I'm going to start next, I want to get a couple of bits finished and then I'm going to start this and I want to get this finished fairly quickly too because it is a birthday present for my sister-in-law. Um, she is called Tabby and she's lovely. She is on Instagram at, um, I think her handle is just Walking Gardener. I shall put it underneath. She has a lovely channel, channel? Account? Grid? Whatever you call it on Instagram. <laughs> full of gardening tips and tricks and beautiful pictures of flowers <laughs> and all of that sort of thing. I am hopelessly rubbish when it comes to gardening but I still find it interesting to look at and yeah she's she's doing great. Um, yeah, her birthday is coming up at the end of this month and I, as I have said, I think previously, money's a bit tight. Personally, the household is okay, but my personal money is a bit tight at the moment. Um, so I'm trying to avoid buying things. It's difficult. I'm struggling, but I'm trying. Um, and therefore, wherever I can make presents for people, instead of buying something, I will. Tabby is extremely crochet worthy. Uh, I made her the big, um, big butterfly cushion last year. Uh, so I sent her a message, probably about a week ago now, saying, right, your birthday's coming up, what do you want? Can I make you anything? She's like, would it be okay to make me a card? Yeah, absolutely. Big project, that's okay, I don't mind at all. Thrilled that she trusts me enough to make one, because that's a big thing. Um, the request brief, whatever, was um, some form of black and white design and soft. <laughs> so hoping I will fulfil both of those. I will pop a picture up here of the, um, the pattern that we've chosen. I sent her a bunch of pictures of patterns that I like and she chose the one she liked the most. 
can't remember the name of the pattern or the designer, but it will all be in that description down below. Um, I can't show you the yarn yet. It is, well, I can and I will very soon in the next section. <laughs> um, no, not the next one, the one after. When we get to acquisitions, I'll show you. I have yarn in a parcel on the floor that is for the cardigan. Um, it's going to be mostly black. And then, as you can see from the pictures, there's a panel down the back that is uh, triangles on a coloured background. And the, I think the way around I'm going to do it is the triangles will be white and the background purple. I might do it the other way around. I might do white background, purple triangles. Purple is Tabby's favourite colour. Um, so yeah, that's that. I've got the yarn. I'm excited to start, but I do just want to finish a couple of things first. Mainly the summer cushion, to be fair. That needs to be finished and it'd be good to make some progress on Salazzle and get closer to the end of my summer top as well. But also her birthday is coming up really soon. <laughs> so, um, although again, you will know if you've been here before, I am now May, June, no, April to May to June, about three and a half months overdue with my brother's birthday present. So <laughs> I love making things for people and I will absolutely do it. Don't expect it on your birthday or at Christmas. It'll, you'll get it at some point. Um, which is why actually it's really nice. One of the reasons it's really nice that Tabby's asked for a cardigan because I know there's not really any pressure to get it at the moment, to finish it at the moment because she won't want to wear it anyway, it's too warm. Um, so yes, picture of the pattern, pattern details, and I'll show you the yarn in a few minutes. On my radar at the moment, things falling off the wall over there. Um, if you're not following this channel, not me, the person I'm about to mention, already either on Instagram or on YouTube, you should be, she's amazing. I am talking about Cassandra from Craftably Ever After. I think the name is the same both here and on Instagram. I shall check and again, details below. Cassandra is fantastic. <laughs> um, her videos are just always so full of energy and enthusiasm and passion for the craft. It's, it's really, really lovely. Uh, she releases a video at least once a week. They're usually fairly short. Um, and her speciality is amigurumi. She is a crochet too. And she particularly likes making bears, but does branch out into other things. And everything she makes is fantastic. She does also design amigurumi patterns. She's got a couple in magazines at the moment. I think there's one in the latest issue of Crochet Now. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But it might be. Anyway, she is a big, big fan of doing um, make-alongs and collaborations and all of that sort of thing. And she has recently launched the biggest crochet collaborative make-along that I'm aware of and that I think she's aware of. Um, called the Amigurumi World Tour. And what she's done, she has selected a particular book of Amigurumi patterns. I can't remember the name of the book or the design, the yeah, author, designer, I'm sorry. But I will link Cassandra's video. I'll try and find the one where she launched the World Tour. If not, I'll just link one of the others where she mentions it. And she'll show you the book. And so she's got two She's got one at home and then two others that are being sent out across the world. One is going around America, one is going around the rest of the world to a bunch of us who have volunteered to get involved basically and the book is being sent on from one person to the next and when you get the book you choose a pattern, make that thing, send the pictures to Cassandra and then send the book on to the next person. 
and if you are not in that selection of people who are actively um, sending and receiving the book you can join in anyway by if you have the book available making the patterns anyway and sending the pictures to Cassandra and you know telling her where you're from and she's set up a uh, that journal thing on her blog where she's adding in all the pictures from everybody and you know where everybody's from he's taking part and it's just it's so wonderful it's a really lovely um, just a lovely community project it's really building like a strong community between everyone who's involved uh, I will be honest I haven't chatted much to people yet again there's been a lot going on <laughs> um, but I'm on the list for the rest of the world book <laughs> so um, I can't remember where it is at the moment somewhere in Europe I think I think there's a couple more people over that way and then it will be coming to the UK and there are a few other UK crocheters before me who will get it um, but I'm really I'm looking forward to it I can't wait <laughs> to get the book and to choose a pattern I think the only stipulations are that you choose a pattern that hasn't already been made for that book obviously there's two books so there will be duplicates um, so I'm hoping there's one I like by the time it gets to me <laughs> some of them aren't really up my street but I'm sure whatever's left I will find something lovely to make and possibly put my own spin on it a little bit depending on what it is and um, yeah it's just fun really I can't wait for it to turn up so one day I'm gonna get a lovely surprise parcel <laughs> with a book in it and obviously when that happens I shall update here and on Instagram and everything so you all you will know about it as well okay that's that um, yeah and like I said please do go in follow Cassandra on Instagram, subscribe to her here, she's just lovely. Okay, acquisitions. What should I do first? I've mentioned that parcel, let's do that parcel. I'll get it the right way around, so I don't show you my address. Nice big parcel from um, Wool Warehouse. It's arrived the other day, I haven't opened it yet, I thought I'd open it with you. So the majority of the yarn in here, so I'll try and keep the rustling quiet, but it's tricky. The majority of the yarn in here is for the cardigan, as I've mentioned. But of course, well, not actually, I wasn't going to buy any other yarn. That was gonna be good. Um, okay. But I was three pounds-ish off the threshold for free delivery. I thought, well, the delivery costs more than that, so I might as well get some more yarn. <laughs> so there is one. There is one skein of yarn in here that is for me. Or at least there should be. Oh, it might be that one on top, in fact. So I should do that one first. Should do that one first. Nice big organza bag. They are always great for storing things in yes so I lots and lots of people talk about how much they hate working with black yarn because it's hard to see what you do for anyone who doesn't know I am partially sighted one of the things I struggle with the most is sensitivity to light and light colors bright colors looking at them for a long time can, can hurt to be honest so I like black yarn <laughs> um, and I use it quite a lot which means my stock of black yarn is dropping so I can't afford to buy everything I want right now but I thought seeing as I had you know space in the basket at Wool Warehouse I would get myself some black sock yarn um, it's not actually intended for socks I've got a plan in here 
for a shawl I want to make using the advent minis from one of my advent calendars last year. I want to do a mosaic crochet pattern and so I'm thinking either the background or the design will be black and then it will show up the colours of the other yarn really really nicely. Um, so I treated myself to this one which is a West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply. That's not showing up very well. Is that focusing? Come on. Oh, not really but I think that will have to do, sorry. Um, and it is in the colour number six which is licorice and it is just blackest blackest black. Um, but this is a sock yarn, it could be used for socks. It is 75% wool and 25% nylon. West Yorkshire Spinners are, as the name suggests, a Yorkshire based brand, which appeals to me. Um, I have used some of their yarn before and I think they're pretty well known actually in the biz. So that's nice, it's quite, um, it's not as smooth as some of the other sock yarns I've used, but ah, no, that'll be because most of the sock yarn I've got is merino wool and nylon. This is just wool. So obviously merino is always a bit softer and smoother, but that's okay. This is still, it'll still be nice. It'll still be nice. Right, yarn for the cardigan. Look at that monster. Look at that. It's huge. Um, this is the Stylecraft Special Aran with wool. So it's mostly acrylic, but it's wool as well. Just checking how soft it is. That could be softer, but I think it'll be okay. This is, let me find the weight, a 400 gram ski. <laughs> which is approximately 816 metres or 892 yards. I've got two, which <laughs> is the most um, economical way to, to buy the yarn that I needed, basically. And uh, this is just, the colour is just called black. It is number 3371, if you're looking for it yourself. And um, they do it in the DK as well and in the... Um, just acrylic Aaron. You know, Stylecraft are really good. Most of their colours are repeated across their ranges. Hang on, just trying to prop that against the tripod so that I don't lose it. <laughs> just trying to run away. Um, so yeah, they might, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with those in terms of using them. This just acrylic that I've got is softer. I might send the wool back and get just acrylic because she doesn't want it to be super soft oh, I don't know, no, I'll have to think because I have also got a Starcraft Special Aaron in a much more sensibly sized 100 gram skis 100% acrylic um, this is in Emperor which is 1425 lovely deep purple Sorry, my hands are shaking. I think that's why it's struggling to focus so much. And I have also got it in white, which is 1001. And like I said, that's for the, the panel of triangles down the back. I don't know now whether I'm going to keep this or whether I'm going to send it back and get more. It is instantly 80% acrylic, premium acrylic. 20% wool. It is nice. It is nice. I think it'll wash nicely. It's machine washable. Recommends 30 degrees but it's safe to wash at 40 apparently. And you can do a cool tumble dry on it. So thought it might be nicer than just acrylic but now I don't know that feels a little bit scratchy I might have a look after I've finished filming I don't know I'm gonna look at the price
price difference and just get a bit of that sock yarn. Put it back in there already. Okay. Um, oh my goodness, brain, come on. Um, yeah, I might have a look at just swapping that to just the acrylic. I haven't been to the bag, it's just over there, so I can send it back. And I'll keep the other two, three balls, so. Yeah, I don't know, what to think about that. Right, I was going to show you some stuff that I got from Timu, which is like display stuff for my store when I go and do markets, but I'm not sure where I've put it all. I think it's underneath this pile of rubbish behind me. <laughs> it's not rubbish. Um, it looks like it, but it isn't. Um, so that'll have to wait for another day. I do have one more thing to show you. She says, utterly failing to find it. I couldn't find it because I was sensible and put it in a sensible place. <laughs> it wasn't just in the pile of clutter on the floor. <sighs> so I mentioned this last time and it has, I've had it for um, a few weeks, but I wasn't prepared last time so I didn't show you it then. So I thought I'd show you it now. I'm just trying to find the box number for you. There we go. This is Crochet Society box number 49. This is the last one in my subscription. I am no longer a subscriber. And that's a little bit sad. It's saving me a lot of money and I don't need more yarn. I certainly don't need more yarn that I might not use. Um, they're always lovely boxes, they're really thoughtfully put together. You get quite a lot in them, to be fair, for the money. Um, but of course they're not always to my taste. But one of the good, really, really good things about Crochet Society is that they... There aren't usually many, but if they have any boxes left over from a month's run, they add them to their shop. Asked, they add them to their shop in a past boxes section. So if you see one you particularly like and you're not subscribed, you have still got a chance of getting it. So I'll still keep an eye on them, and if anything really exciting crops up, I might get the odd box. I just thought I'd show you what's in this one. Uh, I'm not going to hold it up because I can't be bothered. So I shall show you all the bits one by one. I'm going to yawn. <gasps> oh, sorry, I'm very tired at the moment. Aren't I always though? I need to stop saying that, don't I? There's no point. Right, the yarn in here is another Crochet Society exclusive, which I do wish they'd stop doing. I don't know why, but I really like their yarn, actually. So Crochet Society, if you happen to see this, <laughs> stop keeping it exclusive to the boxes it's amazing yarn just release it and we'll all buy loads because it's really lovely so this is the crochet society fresh cotton cake and what weight is it that must be a four ply surely oh it's sport weight 100 percent cotton sport weight and the color for this one is called seashell nice neutral colour, it's focused ish and then we have another cake of the same in the colour sorbet stripes, nice self striping one, some lovely fun colours, it's not really focusing very well but you can get the general gist, so two of those, uh, how much is in those? saw it a minute ago. Did I? No. 150 grams, which is roughly 450 meters. So roughly 900 meters of yarn altogether, which is pretty good. Um, there is, of course, the mini magazine, which I'll have a quick flip through in a moment. And we have the little extra goodies in this box. As always, there is a stitch marker. This time it is a little 
bag of popcorn which is quite cute and we have a lovely sparkly hook 3.75 mil to go with the yarn is the theory and here these are really really useful folding scissors this will be the third set of their folding scissors that I've got they're so clever so useful you just wait a little bit stiff to get them folded back up and I have just nearly cut myself <laughs> there we go make sure they're folded right back there we go let's make sure I'm not bleeding no I just scratched myself a bit I'm fine there yeah, fold up nice and neat look at them and you can never have too many pairs of scissors if you're anything like me in particular and I think I've mentioned before how I have a project project bag with an oceans pouch for every project and so I have every project has its own pair of scissors and various other things um, and then we have this lovely big tote bag for putting all your crochet in or other things to take to the beach or whatever. Nice, big, relatively plain uh, with summer vibes only on the front. And again, you can never have too many bags. <laughs> I'm sure some people disagree. I think my husband does. But I stand by it. You can never have too many bags. So that's all the little goodies. And I'll show you the yarn. So quick flip through the book. This box has been created, created, curated by Lauren Willis, who is a designer. Oh, that's what's exciting about this box. You know, I mentioned earlier that I've just seen, because I've seen a picture of her. I mentioned that um, the jumper, the Christmas jumper, is a pattern by Manatee Squares. Well, Manatee Squares is Lauren Willis. It's the lady herself. <laughs> so these patterns have all been designed by her. She has chosen the yarn, I believe. And pattern number one is the Wear Anywhere Sun Hat. Obviously not going to show you the pattern instructions because you, know, you need to subscribe. You know, these have all been designed for Crochet Society and when they are released back to the designers will be paid patterns for the designers I would imagine. Uh, is the Lazy Days Beach Accessories. So a number of smaller items. There's a water bottle holder, there's a cup holder, cup cosy type thing. I think it's a little pouch. And it does tell me here, I think. Hang on. Right, sunglasses pouch is one of them. And then, yeah, a water bottle holder. That's, that's the instructions for that still. And so is that. That's the instructions for the strap. Or tablet cover, that's the other one. So if you've taken your tablet with you. Um, Oh, that might be it, maybe. I thought there was something else as well. But no, I can't see it on here, so maybe not. That is then a bit about Lauren Willis. I'll interview Wiz. Always good. And pattern number three is the Sea Breeze Shawl. That looks lovely. one of those relatively simple but still interesting patterns of what that looks like. You get some recommendations for other yarn that would work with these patterns. And we have a fourth pattern called the Party in the Park top, which actually looks really nice as well. I don't tend to wear short sleeve things, but I bet I could make sleeves to go on that. There you go. That is Crochet Society Box 49, and that is, unless anything changes, the last Crochet Society Box I will be able to show you. So 
So there we go. It's a little bit sad, but like I said, I don't need to have them. <laughs> I really don't need to have them. And that's all my acquisitions. More than expected. Like I said, I'm trying not to spend money, but everything is for a purpose or is something I paid for each. So all good. Right. Oh, I need to finish because I need to go and have some lunch and the shopping, weekly shop will be here soon. Little, little bit of chatter, most of which I've already mentioned, so this won't take long. Like I said, I'm going to my wonderful friend Lindsay's tonight. I will finally be able to give her a birthday present, which I have, I believe, showed you before. Um, I just have a really good catch up, basically. It's been too long, too long since I last saw her. And I can't wait, it's going to be a good night. I fully expect to be very hungover tomorrow. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I'm going to yawn again. Hmm. Sorry, apparently I've gone sleepy. Um, what else to say? Um, yeah, last day of term for Ned. Like I've said, he's finishing year three, which means in September he goes into year four. My little baby, he's grown up. Um, so yeah, mixed, mixed emotions. <laughs> um, as I will have mentioned last year, because this podcast has been going for over a year now, um, I find the summer holidays really hard. It's just a long time. So I have to try and entertain him without just resorting to, there you go, look at your screens. <laughs> um, so he will get far too much screen time. That's just a given these days. But I am going to try and get us out of the house and doing other things and tidying up a bit. <laughs> um, maybe see if he wants to decorate his bedroom or something like that. We could do that sort of thing. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. I need to get in touch with all my friends and his friends. <laughs> and right, right who's who's available who can we do things with who is willing to come to our house or let us go to theirs so i don't have to be outside uh, yeah set up a bunch of play dates and park dates and that sort of thing just so i don't go completely insane by september <laughs> um other chat. I am in theory going to be at a market in Boston Spa in the Village Hall this, no not this Saturday, a week on Saturday the 27th I think of July. Um, that is being run by uh, Adele at Bee Crafty Markets. Uh, you have done quite a few of her markets now, she's lovely and they're always super well organised. Um, she is my inspiration in fact for organising my own. I'm not 100% certain whether I will be there at this precise moment in time. There's things going on, things up in the air, which will affect whether or not I'm able to. But obviously I will let Adele know as soon as possible if I can't go. And we'll probably put an announcement up on Instagram and so on as well. Um, and talking of markets, I am still planning my my market that I will be hosting on the 5th of October. I was thinking of having live music, I'm no longer certain whether that is manageable. I can't really afford to pay anyone to do it, which is a bit of an issue. So I'm going to look at getting a license to be able to play recorded music and have a Spotify playlist or something going. Um, and I'm looking for entertainers, for want of a better word, things like I'd like to have a face painter, I'd like to have like some kids games set up, things that can be done. Um, I don't really know what else, someone making balloon animals, I don't know, anything like that that's kind of entertainment and we'll just get people to stick around a bit and give them something to do. Um, 
you know, those men. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that'd be that'd be really good. So if you do something like that yourself, or if you know anyone who does, please let me know. Do you get in touch? Again, my email address and all the other ways you can get in touch are in the description. So just drop me a message. That would be really, really helpful. I will be reaching out to people, but I don't really know where to start at the moment. <laughs> um, and I need to get a bit of a shift on because yeah, it's right at the beginning of October and we are approaching the end of July. So in reality, I've only got, really got two months to get it planned and make sure I know what I'm doing. Um, and that's that. That's today. Done and dusted. Sorry it has been a bit disjointed and a bit scatterbrained more so than usual. Um, like I said at the beginning, there is stuff going on, but I am okay. So it's fine. I'm just, it's taking up a lot of brain power. Uh, so I shall, I shall stop waffling on and say goodbye. Um, but first I will end with my usual little spiel of if you have liked this video please do drop a little thumbs up on it um, if you have not already subscribed please do hit that subscri subscribe button which I can't say <laughs> apparently today um, both of these things benefit me obviously they are completely free for you to do and take seconds and if you do subscribe you can choose to be notified every time I upload a video which means you will never ever miss my beautiful face <laughs> I've gone all silly now um, what else do I want you to do I want you to share this share my channel share my Instagram account whatever you call it let people know about me that would be lovely share the love um and comment please i know i've not really asked for anything specific today but just say hello let me know what you're working on let me know what you've got planned if you've got kids and the summer holidays are looming for you as well then please do let me know and i will commiserate <laughs> um if you've got any easy really really easy fun indoor ideas <laughs> to do with an eight-year-old boy that would be incredible um if you live in Harrogate and want to meet up, let me know. <laughs> Not saying we definitely will, but you never know. Um, yeah, just drop. I love to hear from you. I'd really, really love to hear from you. Um, you know, I like chatting to people about things that I'm interested in, and that's what this channel is all about. So <sighs> that's that. On that note, I'm going to go. I'm late for my lunch. Although I have been out for breakfast with Kelvin this morning, so it's not, I don't really need lunch. Um, but perhaps more importantly, the weekly shop is going to be delivered at any point in the next hour, so I probably ought to stop and go and be available to unpack all that. Thank you very, very much for watching. Whether you have been here before or you are brand new, I appreciate you being here. It is incredible, and even more so if you have subscribed already. Thank you so, so much. I will be back in just under a couple of weeks this time. I'll try and be on schedule next time. So until then, I'm choking over my words. Take care and try and enjoy yourself. And I'll be back soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.